Springbank Bourbonwood 14 year. Time to hunt for one? Check out the whiskey whistle. Hey everybody, why don't you come with me to the Scottish Highlands? It's gonna be a blast. Hello my whiskey brothers and sisters, Mark here from Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, the center of North America, bringing you Springbank Bourbonwood aged 14 year, a cask strength Campbellton single malt scotch whiskey. Let's check it out together, shall we? Here on Whiskey Whistle, we check out the color of the whiskey. We check out the legs of Springbank 14 year. Then we check out the nose, the palate, and the finish for Springbank 14 year bourbon wood. All right, so let's do that together. This, by the way, was a selection from last month's Winnipeg Whiskey Club Club Night. We did a Springbank night. It was called Copper Night One, sponsored by Hardwired Electric. Let's get into this now. Boy, I really want to smell this since I've capped it and see what's going on there. Beautiful nose, really, really nice. I'll put that back on in a minute. Okay, let's check the color out. What do you see there for color for this Springbank 14 year? You know, it looks rather similar to your standard Springbank 10. Of course, the Springbank 10 has a little bit of sherry involved there. This, however, is entirely ex bourbon matured. It's cask strength, and I can see little. Uh, uh, little floaties in there and that's actually quite encouraging to me telling me that this is actually Absolutely unchill filtered. In fact, it may not even be barrier filtered. I'm not sure But it's also natural in color, which is really awesome Okay, let's check out the legs for this spring bank 14 And I'll tell you right now as I mentioned in the last review this one needs a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of oxidation time and breathing time. So pour it, forget about it, come back after, let's say, an hour. Okay, so the legs for Springbank 14. Very slow to develop, extremely slow. It's cask strength, meaning there's more stuff dissolved in the alcohol and the water, there's less water, there's more alcohol. Um, there's more sugar content. Uh, when we think of whiskey, we don't think there's sugar in there, but there is a tiny bit of sugar in whiskey. Beautiful, excellent legs. And I'll tell you right now, this does have a very nice thick mouth feel. Under the nose, We get just big, beautiful coconut and pineapple. Tropical fruits as well, which is very interesting as it's a bourbon matured whiskey. So that pineapple. A little bit of dried papaya. Icing sugar. Lots of cinnamon. Something almost eucalyptus-like. I think I said mint at the club night, but it's more like eucalyptus. It really clears your nasal passages. Woo! And it makes your eyes water slightly too. Very potent. And we really see that direct firing affect the the nose here um, it's got a very very just poof, power in the nose i can just imagine what new make spring bank must smell like slight hint of sulfur there and this is not coming from sherry obviously it's bourbon mature this is coming from the stills And to me, that actually adds to the event. I think we'll have to add some water to uncover more in the nose, but let's try the palette neat. Cheers, everybody.
and a big cheers to the Winnipeg Whiskey Club. <laughs> oh, so potent. Again, coconut, pineapple, that interesting icing sugar, even on the palate. Yeah, we really need some water in there. The finish is quite long. Coconut sugar. I'm going to put one. I'm going to put two. And a little bit. So that's going to be about three, not quite, two little, little more than two milliliters added there. Okay, I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. And I'm going to go back to the 10, Springbank 10, just to compare now that we're sitting here. Sweeter, grassier. That's something coming from that sherry uh, casks or sh even there maybe even just be the staves. It could be like a Frankenstein cask. I think that's some first fill or second fill, probably second fill sherry going on there. It's much sweeter. This is a much drier, very different, very different Springbank. Probably Springbank enthusiasts, they may not like this bourbon wood because of the fact that it's actually so different. I noticed the ratings for this though on um, some of the big websites are actually quite high. With water, I get a little bit of um, oak varnish. I get some beautiful lumber notes. Toasted coconut now. That little dash of salt. It's still, however, a very, very potent nose. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more because I know that it needs it. And this is what I noticed um, at the club night as well, was that this was just a very thirsty, thirsty whiskey. Yeah, that's toned it down. So it's not quite singeing my nostrils anymore. It's a really angry malt in the beginning. So that's what I mean. That's what I mean by you have to really leave it behind for a while in your glass and then adjust it with water to your liking. I've added, I guess, about three, three and a half milliliters of water. Um, you may want to add only a couple of drops. You may want to just drink it neat. If you're a purist and I know there are some however if you're a purist you're gonna be missing out and you may not like this very much but actually it's very good some gooseberries underripe ones It's still got a very polished, oaky note about it. But the toasted coconut is welcome. Pineapple is still there. Icing sugar. No peat found on the nose here. Or very minimal anyway. All right, so the palate then with water. Cheers, everybody.
Mm-hmm. Underripe pineapple, some fresh young coconut, icing sugar, and I tell you, it needs more water. So we're now up to about four milliliters of water added. And that was probably about 20 milliliters to start. So we're going to see this cloud up very quickly. Yeah, I'm getting a little hint of a grassy note here. Which is actually quite nice. That eucalyptus note is still hiding there and I actually like it. So it's welcome to me, but I just don't like my nose being obliterated by a whiskey. Smell very... Uh, Use your nose very delicately with this. When you really coax it, you get some green strawberries. Some very firm blueberries even. That menthol eucalyptus note is still there. Pineapple, especially pineapple skins. Interesting. Raw almonds? Almond skins. That's probably the most water I've ever added to a whiskey. Even at cask strength. And we're definitely getting cloudy there. Get my coffee here. You do what you got to do, right? Okay. A little bit friendlier. But yeah, just grassy, menthol, hint of coconut, toasted coconut, uh, pineapple, skins, almond skins. That... Um, Polished oak scent. Mmm. A little juicier on the palate. Young coconut. Hmm. It's very interesting. But you know, the funny thing with this is it just really takes a lot of water. And I don't think many people will have the patience to do what I'm doing. Oh, 
And the more water you add, the more grassy it gets. Mm. And it really brings about that subtle sweetness. Makes it a little bit more accessible to unlock some of those flavors that are in there. But a very different spring bank. And it didn't really float my boat at the whiskey club night. And I'm, I feel not bad with it now. But, well, I guess the best way to express this is by letting you know the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Springbank 14. What's that going to be? Well, folks, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Springbank 14 Bourbon Wood. 55.8% ABV cask strength. That, folks, is going to be 85 out of 100. Yep, you heard it. 85 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for this very unusual, very challenging spring bank. And... What would I suggest you do with that? Aerate it. Add some water. Make sure you have some spring bank hazel burner long grow around and maybe mix them and make something that's a little bit different, a little bit unique. Hmm. Well, that's very pleasant. It kind of corrects the, not that they're errors, but it just fills in some missing boxes for that Springbank 14. And this is an interesting case where I think most people will prefer the 10 year old to the 14 and only a few very unusual palettes will really enjoy this unusual spring bank. That's my two cents for that one. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts of spring bank 14 if you've tried. Don't forget to comment, like this video, subscribe to Whiskey Whistle, hit that little emblem right over here, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell above so that you're notified of the future Whiskey Whistles. And uh, check me out on Patreon. Become a supporter of Whiskey Whistle through Patreon Join the Whiskey Whistle crew at uh, Patreon, pardon me, patreon.com backslash Whiskey Whistle. And I mentioned it a few times, if you're in Winnipeg, join the Winnipeg Whiskey Club. You can check out the Facebook group, Winnipeg Whiskey Club and Friends. The website is winnipegwhiskeyclub.com. And if you want to come with me to the Scottish Highlands and check out 16 distilleries in 10 days, no, 9 days, pardon me, then why not come on the Whiskey Whistle Highland Malt Expedition? That's a collaboration with Whiskey Whistle and Scholarly Sojourns. Um, November 10th to 18th, 2019. All right, take care, everybody. We'll see you for the next one. Goodbye. Thanks for watching Whiskey Whistle. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Be sure to stay tuned next time to join me, the host of the show, Mark, as I explore more whiskeys with you. Take care now, and we'll see you next time. If you know